Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you the guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we are talking about Japan and asking the question, how good is Japan? Well, let's break down their bonuses and talk through that, and we'll see if we can't reach some sort of consensus. Uh, their first ability is called Divine Wind. Land units receive plus five combat strength in land tiles adjacent to the coast, and naval units receive plus five combat strength in shallow water tiles. Uh, and it also builds the encampment, the holy site, and the theater square districts in half the time. Let's take the first half of this bonus first. Uh, five combat strength for land units adjacent to the coast is a fairly rubbish ability. This will have some very, very uh, slight usage. Um, it might be if you are ever fighting off a naval attack using crossbows or archers, that may be slightly bon uh, might be a slight bonus that will be useful. Uh, there might occasionally be barb camps over there, or you might be defending in a district with your if your city is settled on the coast, or that might be useful. But in general, you're going to be doing most of your combat, especially if you're playing on Pangaea maps, which are going to be the more balanced maps because of the maps that don't have isolation in them. If you're going to be playing on Pangaea, you're probably not seeing all that many times where that five combat strength is useful. Also, since it's a flat combat boost, not a percentage boost, it's going to taper off the later than the game it gets, where five combat strength is a lot less important than it is in the early game. So really, this is an early game uh, coastal bonus, or, or excuse me, an early game bonus for land units near the coast, and it just doesn't seem like that is going to be all that useful most of the time. It's gonna be very situational. Uh, in contrast, the naval bonus is very slightly better. Um, Assuming it's going to be a naval game, which is pretty rare, so maybe as a whole that portion of the bonus isn't that good either. But in general, the early game uh, naval units are going to have to be hugging the coast because that's the only tiles they can take. So they will get that plus five combat bonus pretty consistently because it's the only tiles they can be in. That's okay. Uh, not a great bonus, quite honestly. Um, but maybe if you have ever had the chance to coast to, to rush a neighbor with coastal units, or maybe it's a naval map you're playing on, this isn't going to be a terrible bonus, but not that great either. All right, so those bonuses, not such not such interesting bonuses, kind of minor deals. This next one is actually really good. Build encampments, holy sites, holy sites, excuse me, and theater districts in half the time. Um, holy sites and encampments are both really strong right now in uh, the multiplayer scene uh, for the early game in particular. Encampments are uh, both a defensive building in the sense that once you get walls up and you have an encampment, that's two locations that you can shoot from as well as two locations where you can put units where they're not going to be damaged until the walls protecting them are destroyed first, which is really good for holding uh, certain tiles and holding certain positions. So that is quite useful, but it also uh, cities that have an encampment built are able pr to produce units that require strategic resource, even if you only have one of that strategic resource in your empire. Right now, the strongest early game units out there are Light Cavalry, which are the Horsemen units. You're going to see a lot of Horsemen if you're playing multiplayer and against other human players because they are super mobile, super powerful, and very early in the tech tree. You're going to be fighting those a lot. It's very difficult to fight uh, Light, Cal uh, Light Cav if you don't have Light Cavalry of your own. And uh, getting a cheap encampment means that you don't have to get super lucky and get two horses. If you only have one horse, you still have some counterplay. You can get out a cheap encampment nice and early and still get those, still be able to produce the horsemen at least out of this particular city. I really like that bonus. The holy site one is similar. Holy sites are getting a religion is nice. Um, and you get a religion in all your cities that have a holy site when you found that religion. So if you can get holy sites up early as you're accumulating your profit points, you can save yourself faith that you would normally have to spend, spend spreading your religion to your cities. So that in of itself is nice. It's also very nice. It synergizes quite well with faith purchasing strategies. And there is a government choice. This is one of the tier two governments, um, theocracy, I believe, that gives you access to faith purchasing units, which is quite nice. And there are some benefits to having faith in the early game and just getting a religion rolling in general. And Honestly, the biggest downside to bothering with any of the faith-based strategies is religion isn't super strong and faith purchasing comes later in the game. And if you don't have a lot of faith, isn't very efficient. And basically it's, you don't tend to want to invest the hammers in building a holy strike site. You'd have other better things to build. Half off's a really big deal there. Um, Theater Square District half off, I haven't found as useful, perhaps because I haven't found uh, culture districts in general, the theater districts in general, to be all that strong in multiplayer. It feels like the game is very combat driven right now. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of victory conditions. Games are still, uh, people are still figuring out the game. So a lot of the games tend to end in concedes or mid game uh, military uh, domination victories. We haven't seen tourism be something. So this might actually be really good. Perhaps we find out in the near future that uh, 
uh, very early tourism rushes are a thing and you need a lot of culture to make that happen, then this the same thing is going to uh, be, be true of this building. It's going to be a nice early game cultural building that you can throw up. But at the moment, this building doesn't seem very strong to me. So really, it's the first two parts of this that are driving my thought that this is a nice bonus, this half off encampment, half off holy site stuff. I really do like those bonuses quite a lot. All right, their second uh, bonus here is all districts receive an additional standard adjacency bonus for being adjacent to another district. Really what this means is in general, right now districts are, they have a bonus for them of their type. So uh, a holy site district is gonna have a faith bonus, one extra faith per two districts near it. A culture district is gonna have one extra culture for every two districts uh, adjacent to it. This doubles that bonus essentially. All districts receive an additional standard adjacency bonus for being adjacent to another district, uh, which is a nice little bonus because you tend to want to put your districts near each other anyways. Uh, the city center itself counts as a district. So one of the quickest ways to get that those those three those, those adjacency bonus near each other, having three districts in a triangle is the city center and then two districts. Uh, and now Japan, everyone's gonna be doing that. Japan just gets double the bonuses when doing that, which is really, really nice. Uh, this is just a pretty solid bonus as a whole. Not super big because the bonuses tend to be either one of the yield. So one, one gold for the commerce, one production for the industrial, one faith for the religious, one science for the, you know, the campus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not a massive bonus, but it, it adds up and it adds up. It's per city and it's free. It's just by being Japan, essentially. So I like these bonuses. I don't think these are uh, any of these so far are super strong, but I think they are particularly these last couple are situationally. These these ones here are situationally useful. And this one as a whole is just free, free yields, which is always quite nice. All right, let's talk about their unique units. The first of those is the Samurai, right? The first of these other bonuses. Samurai is kind of bad, uh, unfortunately. Here's why it's bad and here's what it could be useful for. So it is a um, melee unit. It's not actually a unit replacement. Um, I believe you can still, as Japan, get swordsmen. It's at a different part of the tech tree. So the Samurai is available here at Military Tactics, which is the same tech that you would use for pikemen. You can still get your swordsman if you want swordsman. It's a medieval era unit, so it has its three upkeep, which is quite expensive. It is a uh, melee unit, and I really don't like the melee classification of units here. And I'll tell you guys about that in just a second. Uh, with three three uh, maintenance costs and 180 production. Okay. Uh, its special ability is it doesn't suffer combat penalties when damaged. Yeah, the problem is that's not that big a bonus, and melee units as a whole are pretty bad. Not. And I gotta be careful when I say that. The classification in Civ 6 does not consider horsemen units to be melee units. The horsemen unit are either light cavalry or heavy cavalry. They are not uh, melee units, even though they do attack in melee. Melee units refer to the, the warrior, swordsman, uh, pikemen, spearmen, infantry, musket, that style stuff. Those are the melee units of this game. The problem with melee units right now is terrain cost is very, very high. Uh, it is not possible for a melee unit, if let's say there is a melee unit standing on your hill. You have a melee unit on a hill. There's a tile in between, like a flat tile, and there's another unit on another hill. This, this situation is gonna occur all the time. The problem is your melee unit cannot in one turn attack that other unit in the hill because it doesn't have enough movement points. It takes one movement point to across, across that open terrain, and then it doesn't have enough movement points remaining to attack into a rough terrain tile, whereas a horseman would in pretty much every single situation. So basically, because movement got made more difficult in Civ 6 relative to Civ 5, distances became longer, and the melee units only have two movement, and it's not really enough to get where they need to be going. So melee units have been relegated almost entirely to blocking, to standing in a tile that you don't want someone to get to uh, with as much combat strength fortified as you can. Um, the Samurai is okay at that, I guess. It has uh, increased combat strength, um, but probably what you're going to be defending against is horsemen, and the increased combat strength from being a samurai may not be as good as the just straight up horse anti-horse bonus that you might have from being a pikeman. Um, it's just not a very useful unit. I almost never tech pikeman tech. Uh, it seems to be another thing that doesn't isn't that necessary. It's better to defend horses with more horses of your own most of the time. And ranged units are certainly king at the moment between uh, between horse units and ranged units. There isn't a lot of room for melee units, which just makes the samurai not that impressive. It's bonus of doing additional damage based on uh, when it's wounded really isn't that much either. I think we're, I'm seeing things like two, four, six, uh, minus two, four, six uh, bonuses for combat strength based on uh, my wounding. I'll have to look into that a little bit more, but it doesn't feel like the penalties are all that bad. For example, a unit at 1% health 
doesn't do 1% damage. It does much more than 1% damage. And I don't know exactly what those ratios are. If it kept it similar to Civ, a unit at one, uh, Civ 5, excuse me, a unit at 1% health is going to do something like 50% damage, which means this the bonus of getting additional damage or not losing damage while wounded is less good than it might immediately appear if you assume that a unit at 1% health is going to do 1% damage. So not all that impressed with the Samurai. It comes at an awkward tech uh, isn't particularly cheap, is a melee unit which doesn't have a lot of use and uh, just isn't that good overall. All right, moving on, let's talk about the electronics factory. Uh, this is a Japanese replacement for the factory. Uh, factories provide three production in all cities within six tiles. The Japanese replacement is four production for all cities within six tiles. That's okay. Um, that is an increase on a building that you're going to want to build anyways, and it's a production boost. And I think currently, I think production is probably the most important uh, uh, resource in the game right now is production. So I think that is a nice boost. And after uh, researching electricity, this building provides an additional four culture to its city. It's pretty solid. It's a solid building replacement. Um, it's not anything amazing. Uh, it's pretty late in the game, so you're seeing factories show up uh, right about here for all the civs. So it's not till industrial era. A lot of stuff has already happened. As I keep saying in these other videos, the sooner you get your bonuses, the more impactful they're going to be. So bonuses that affect the early game are just on a one-to-one. -one. If I had to boost a workshop or a factory, I want the workshop boosted. The workshop shows up much earlier than the factory does. Workshop shows up here, or the factory shows up right here. So. Is it a decent boost? Sure, but it's just a little bit late in the game to be all that impactful, in my opinion. Um, so what does that mean for Japan as a whole? Let's take a look at their bonuses again together. What do we think of this as a whole? I actually find them surprisingly good, um, which seems weird because none of their bonuses were amazing. All their bonuses were either moderate to weak. Maybe it's just a personal preference, but uh, I don't find building districts early is all that good in general. They tend to be fairly expensive. You need a lot of units in this uh, the current meta, especially for multiplayer, especially with the barbarians, uh, and especially with how weak cities are in general at defending themselves. The game is unit oriented right now. Having lots of units is going to put you in a position to better expand, better defend yourself, and better control the shape of the game. Uh, and in large part, that means I don't have time in a lot of my cities to be building buildings, especially buildings that don't give me housing or don't give me luxuries or this type of stuff, right? Like you tend to be housing blocked a lot and you tend to have to focus on stuff that's going to fix that and then focus on units. I like how cheap these are. These let me do uh, strategies that aren't quite as viable as uh, on other civs because it's too slow on other civs. That does let me do some things different with Japan. And I love diversity of strategies being one of the things that I really love about the civ games that I can do all sorts of different things and really utilize uh, civs abilities. So I still think they're pretty good. I think they synergize extremely well with faith purchasing uh, strategies. I think they synergize well uh, with getting these districts out in the ways that other civilizations can't do. That probably means they'll be pretty decent on defense too, build cheap encampments uh, for more defensive stuff. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how they play out in the long run. If my, my, if my thoughts on liking Japan change as I play uh, a lot more games. But my current, my current read on Japan is it's a fairly uh, mediocre to slightly decent Civ. Not anywhere near as powerful as some of the monsters in the game like Samaria or uh, Scythia but decent and uh, has enough early game boosts in this, in the, in the, by districts that it should be able to defend itself and remain somewhat competitive in the early game and perhaps have some interesting mid to late game strategies available to it otherwise. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the follow button. Please hit the subscribe button. Come check me out on uh, Twitch and come check me out on YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Hope you enjoyed it.